Here's the last lesson for the logarithms unit in the Advanced Functions course. We're going to, in this lesson, use all of the log rules that you've learned up until now and see how they can be used in the context of some chemistry and physics applications. Before we do that, let me give you this question here where I ask you to solve the equation. This will just be a warm up to help you remember some log rules. And remember when solving a logarithmic equation, you may end up with an extraneous root. An extraneous root is an answer that doesn't actually satisfy the original equation. So any answers that we get have to make both of these logarithmic expressions be defined. Logarithmic expressions are only defined when the argument is positive. So I'm going to off to the side, write my restrictions. This argument has to be bigger than zero which means x has to be bigger than 6. And this argument has to be bigger than 0, which just means x has to be bigger than 0. So any answer I get has to satisfy both of those conditions. Because if they don't, then it can't be an answer because it makes one or both of those logarithmic expressions be undefined. So as long as I make sure my answer is bigger than 6, that also verifies that it's bigger than 0. So let's just make sure any answers we get are bigger than 6. If we get an answer that's not bigger than 6, then we know it can't actually be an answer. When we solve this equation, I would start by moving all the variable terms to the left. So I've got log base 2 of x minus 6 plus log base 2 of x equals 4. And I want this to be of the format log equals number. So I'm going to want to combine these two logarithms that are being added. And I can use the product rule to combine those because those logs being added have the same base. I can write those as a single log with that same base, with the arguments being multiplied. So I'd have to multiply the x minus 6 and the x. And now that it's of the form log equals number, I can write it in exponential form. So 2 to the 4 equals x squared minus 6x. I just expanded that x into the x minus 6 to get x squared minus 6x. And now I see it's just a quadratic that needs to be solved. So I'll set it to 0, so x squared minus 6x. And I moved the 2 to the 4 over, and 2 to the 4 is 16. So minus 16, and this is factorable. Negative 8 and 2 satisfy the product in sum. So my answers are 8 and negative 2. But hold on, negative 2 isn't bigger than 6, so I know that is an extraneous root. But 8's an answer, 8's bigger than 6. If I plugged 8 in for x into both of those logarithmic expressions, it would make that argument 2 and that argument 8. And those log functions will be defined for both of those arguments. But if I plugged negative 2 in, it actually makes both of these arguments be negative, which means both of these log functions, this one and this one, wouldn't be defined. So it can't be an answer. So now that you remember how to solve log equations, let's go through three different applications of logarithms. So the first one is a chemistry application, where when calculating the pH of a substance, we use an equation that involves log. So the pH scale is used to measure the acidity or alkalinity of a chemical solution. And it's defined by this equation, pH equals negative log of H+, plus, where H plus is the concentration of hydronium ions measured in moles per liter. Now, in this course, we're not so concerned about the chemistry part of this question, like understanding what moles per liter or concentration of hydronium ions, we're not worried about that. We're just seeing that these log functions that we've been working with in this course do have some applications. And because we know log rules, we could use these formulas. So for example, part A says tomato juice has a hydronium ion concentration of 0 0.0001 moles per liter. What's its pH? Remember pH, the formula, is negative log of that hydronium ion concentration. And it gives us the hydronium ion concentration. So I have negative log of 0 0.0001. And I just have to evaluate this. And we could probably actually do this one without a calculator because I could write 0 0.0001 as a base 10 power. That would be equal to one over, well, this decimal place is moved over one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So this would be equal to negative log of 10 to the negative four which means this equals negative, and then the value of the logarithm is just negative 4. So negative, negative 4, the pH is 4. And let me just show you, we could have just evaluated this on your calculator right from the second line here. Negative log you know, 0.0001. Notice, 4. 
Part B says blood has a hydronium ion concentration of about four times 10 to the negative seven. So that's in scientific notation, that's fine. Moles per liter. Is blood acidic or alkaline? Well, if we look at this scale here, if the pH is less than seven, it's acidic, greater than seven, it's alkaline. So let's see what the pH is. pH equals negative log times the hydronium ion concentration. And we're just interested, is this number less than or greater than seven? And I get about 6.4. So six, since 6.4 is less than seven, notice that it is slightly acidic. So 6.4 less than seven, therefore acidic. Part C says orange juice has a pH of three. What's the concentration of hydronium ions? So this time it gives us the pH and we're looking to solve for this hydronium ion concentration. So I would start by maybe dividing both sides by negative one to take care of that negative. So I'd have negative three equals log of H plus. Now I'll convert this to exponential form. Since the base of this log is 10, I could rewrite this logarithmic equation as an exponential equation, 10 to the power of negative three equals h plus. And then we could either write this as a fraction, one over a thousand, or as a decimal, the hydronium ion concentration is 0 0.001 moles per liter. Let's do another one. This one's about the decibel scales. So this is more of a physics application. Some common sound levels are indicated on the decibel scale shown. So we've got at the loudest a rocket is 200 decibels, all the way down to a rustle of leaves is 10 decibels, and then a bunch of things in between. The difference in sound levels, which can be indicated here, beta two minus beta one, that finds us the difference in sound levels, can be found using this equation. So the difference in sound levels is equal to 10 times log of I2 over I1, where what's I2 over I1? It is the ratio of their sound intensities, where the intensity, I, is measured in watts per square meter. So if we do a question using that formula, let me first start by rewriting the formula, beta two minus beta one, the difference in the sounds is equal to 10 log of the quotient of their intensities. And notice it's important to see that the way the quotient of intensities is set up is that it is the intensity of the second sound divided by the intensity of the first sound. And the way the difference is set up, it's the decibel level of the second sound minus the decibel level of the first sound. So the question says, how many times as intense as a whisper is the sound of a normal conversation? So really what we're looking for is the ratio of normal conversation to whisper. We're looking for that value of the ratio, but we want to know how many times as intense is normal combo compared to whisper. That's why I have normal combo being our second sound, whisper being our first sound. So that means when I plug in the decibel levels, make sure you put the decibel level of normal conversation as beta two and whisper as beta one. And we can get those from the chart. Normal conversation was 60 decibels, whisper was 30 decibels. So when I sub in, I would have 60 minus 30 equals 10 log of that ratio of intensities. And then I just have to isolate that argument. So 30 equals 10 log ratio of intensities. Divide both sides by 10, I get three equals log times that ratio of intensities. And then to isolate that ratio of intensities, rewrite in exponential form, it'd be 10 cubed equals I2 over I1, which is equal to a thousand. So that tells us that the ratio of intensity of normal conversation to whisper is a thousand. So normal conversation is a thousand times as intense. Now, if we had have set up the question the other way, if we had have found the ratio of whispering to normal conversation, what we would have ended up getting is 30 minus 60, this would be negative three, 10 to the negative three, we've got one over a thousand. So the ratio of whispering to normal conversation would be one over a thousand, 
or the ratio of normal conversation to whispering is 1,000 over 1. It's the same answer as long as you interpret it properly. Part B says the sound level in normal city traffic is approximately 85 decibels. The sound level while riding a snowmobile is about 32 times as intense. What is the sound level while riding a snowmobile in decibels? Well, let me just write out the equation again for you. Beta 2 minus beta 1 equals 10 log of I2 over I1. And this time it gives us the ratio of intensities. It tells us that a snowmobile is about 32 times as intense as city traffic. That means the ratio of snowmobile to traffic would be 32. Notice that the snowmobile is our sound two and the traffic is our sound one. So when I plug in the decibel level of city traffic it gave me, I have to plug that in for beta one. So when I plug in what it gives me, I have beta one, I have the normal city traffic decibel level, it's 85. And I have the ratio of snowmobile intensity to traffic intensity. It tells us that is 32. And then we just isolate for beta two. All I have to do is add 85 to the other side. 10 log of 32 plus 85. And then we can just evaluate this. And we get about 100. It's about 100 decibels. Our last example is another physics type of example. It says the magnitude m of an earthquake is measured using the Richter scale, which is defined as m equals log of i over i naught, where i is the intensity of the earthquake being measured, and i naught is the intensity of a standard low-level earthquake. So to use that formula, let me just rewrite it here. Magnitude equals log i over i naught. It says how many times as intense as a standard low-level earthquake is an earthquake that measures 2.4 on the Richter scale. So this time we are looking for the ratio of intensity and it gives us the magnitude. So sub in 2.4 for magnitude and we'll solve for the ratio of intensities. If I isolate for this ratio of intensities, I would get 10 to the 2.4 equals I over I naught. And that's about 251, 251.2. So it's 251 times as intense. And the last example says, what's the magnitude of an earthquake? A thousand times as intense as a standard earthquake. So magnitude equals log of, well, the ratio of intensities is a thousand. And log of a thousand, well, 10 to the power of three is a thousand. So my answer is three, the magnitude's three. Okay, that's it. I mean, there's lots of other applications of logarithms. So if you do your practice questions, there'll be other examples in there. But these are a good starting point to give you a foundation of how to apply what you know about logarithms in different contexts.